This your girl, DJ Lady Drea. <laughs> And you're now watching Crowned on Sarah G TV. That's just how the world stands. I guess I'm selfish every now and then. You sin, I sin. You bleed, I bleed. You lose, I lose. I'm human too. Yeah. What is your favorite meal to cook? My favorite meal to cook is tacos. I absolutely love tacos. Any type of tacos, they're fun, they're easy. My little brother loves them, I love them, all of my friends love them. Try my tacos, they're bomb. <laughs> and, all right, let's see a good one. What is one challenge you faced when starting out as a DJ? Oh, this is really good. You know, being a female in the industry, it's definitely male dominated. I just always went places where people didn't really look at me as a DJ. Either look at me as, oh, she's just a pretty face, looks nice or acts nice, and never really for my craft. As time progressed, you know, you kind of just stay firm to what you believe in just showcase what you got. And eventually people really did start to notice and just really address me as, this is the female DJ you gotta take seriously. So that's one challenge that I definitely overcame. And I'm really happy about that. It takes time. Next question. All right. What's one book that changed your perception of life? The Blue Eyes. I believe I read it in high school and then I had to go to college. When I went to college, I read it again and it gave me a more appreciation for actually the color of my skin. The, the world that we live in today, there's still a lot of, you know, I would say superstition that, you know, is there really equality? And The Blue Eyes was definitely a story told about the past of, you know, the enslavement of our people, not just in actual slavery, but through times as we've progressed. Honestly, it's sometimes difficult to appreciate the skin that you're in when you're in the lesser of the position you're faced with adversaries once you're able to overcome it gives you a different sense of confidence and strength and that's something that stuck with me throughout my journey and uh, i'm happy to be exactly where i'm at today you got who made these questions you did sarah i like these questions what was your example of love growing up and how did that affect your outlook on love damn this one's... <laughs> Can we get a pause? <laughs> so basically, I would say the most love I've experienced in my life has to be with my family. There's not many outsiders. I actually come from a very big family. So my mom, three brothers, I had a lot of step siblings and a lot of people that my mom took into my family. But externally, I have like 13 aunts and uncles that literally were grown as either my best friend, my friend, or the aunt or the uncle. So there was no room for anyone else really in between to fit in. Anything that I'm doing musically, they're always there cheering me on from either the sidelines or directly in my events. You know, I'm a loving person. Most people that know me, I'm always smiling. I'm always trying to make someone feel comfortable. I'm the one to break the ice. Really do choose to prefer love than anything else. I'm a lover, not a fighter. You know, when there's a situation where in this industry, it's a lot of dog eat dog kind of scenarios. Either jealousy may take over, envy. To me, that never really overcame in my heart. It was always that, you know what? I just want to grow and I want everybody else around me to grow. Love definitely has to be the answer for me and clearly my family did something good because when you think about Lady Drea, you think about love. Trust that. What accomplishment are you most proud of? Sticking with my career and like just going forward with my, with my DJing. During my DJ career, there's been a lot of adversaries and a lot of moments where I felt that I wanted to give up. I made that big announcement that Lady Dre would no longer be DJing. Something just came over me and, you know, the right people came in at the right time. And guess what? It was just the right words, the right support, the right motivation. And here I am today, more successful than ever. There would be no DJ Lady Drea, but guess what? I didn't, and today I'm here to make an impact and hopefully, you know, help somebody else 
get from point A to B and a little bit closer to their dream with my experiences? <laughs> These questions are getting better and better. Do you believe in breaks in a relationship? <laughs> Y'all not supposed to laugh in the back. Yes, I believe in breaks in a relationship. Have I taken a break in a relationship ever before? No. <laughs> I feel like sometimes in a relationship, things can get overwhelming. It would put you in a compromising position where you actually start to do things that you don't necessarily mean. So I think with a break, it allows you to like clear your head about what you really want and then you can act on it. You know, as I was younger or anyone younger, you think more on impulse. The thought process doesn't really happen. You feel the emotion, you act. When you start to mature, I believe that's the process where you take time and you think before you act. I believe a break initiates that. The break is the time where you're pausing to think so that the, the actions that you actually make, it's, it's really not based off of an emotional basis. It should be normalized. Taking breaks in a relationship, if it's meant to be, it's gonna be and you guys gonna be right back together. Uh, what was it like growing up in a Caribbean household? Well, it was difficult growing up in a Caribbean household. Even being over the age of 25, you still have a curfew. Tell your, <laughs> your mom or your dad where you're going. So there's times when I have places to go and I will get a yes, no, maybe. And it's just like, but I thought I was grown. And then you get the, don't tell me nothing about your age. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I guess. Worse yet, there, it's totally sexist in a Caribbean household because the girls cannot do what the guys do. And I grew up in a house full of men. You know the typical line, girls are supposed to be seen and not be heard, so guess what? It was the worst thing that I can be a DJ going to parties every night as a female and it's just like that was totally absurd. It's unheard of. You're doing it and I'm letting you do it, so now like, you owe me the rest of your life. But besides that, it was a lot of fun, you know, getting to travel to the Caribbean at multiple times a year. I think that's the best experiences of my life, you know. I had the chance to experience a lot of my culture. Carnivals, like the beaches, the nice weather, the food, the people, the people are just totally different. The different sides of, of the world over there versus here. It's a lot more fun than being in cold New York. My mom never changed any of that. When I was outside, I was in New York, but when I came inside, I was in Trinidad, <laughs> literally in my home. So I would definitely say I loved it and I wouldn't have changed it for anything. And that's life in a Caribbean household. What is your personal philosophy? God first, everything else after. If God don't do it, it just won't get done. And honestly, anything that I've done, my mom has taught me, you know what? You sacrifice to God and things would look brighter. Ever since I, I would say I was born, I've really lived by that code and it's always worked for me, you know? Uh, a lot of people don't know, but like, I don't take gigs on a Friday. I go to church on Friday. So I've always made a sacrifice that, you know, Friday would be my Sabbath. I try not to take events on that day. Really to just take the time away from the entertainment world because even in the business you need that you need that getaway where the things consume you it consumes your mind and it makes you either feel alone you feel depressed i've never really had to go through that type of experience in the extreme because my family always keep me on a praying day a bible study day you know church days church functions even today i can really say you know when i experience other of my apprentices that do go through hardships and I'll talk to them and they'll be like, yo, Dre, I had to take off because I couldn't deal with it. I never really had to say that because God always kept me in that kind of mindset where it's like anything that I put for you, you're going to get through because I wouldn't give you more than you can handle. So God first, everything after, it always worked for me. I'm sure it can work for you. How have you used your platform to push the culture forward? When people hear about Lady Drea, they automatically think soca music, dancehall music. They think a Caribbean vibe. Uh, I love that. And nothing's wrong with that, but what it does, it, it minimizes the marketing. When I won the union competition, that was last year, March, and basically it's American-based hip hop and rap competition for basically showcasing your DJ skills. And I brought 
all of the culture, the soca music, the dancehall music, the Latin music, the zouk music, to the competition. And I think that's what really set me aside and allowed me to win over a thousand of different DJs to enter the competition. And honestly, I believe that is the platform. You know, me being able to touch a stage and just show my versatility, it's always representing for the culture. Uh, that's kind of how I got my handle, you know, Lady Drea International. And that's from me experiencing music and DJing on an international level. Even these cultures incorporate American culture into their party or their lifestyle or their DJ set. I can do just the same. And that's exactly what I did. Trust me, you're gonna get that Caribbean vibe from Lady Drea. Where else do we go? And this is the final one. <laughs> is there a music genre you are not a fan of? Oh, that's a good one. I love all genres of music. I love music. But if I would say the ones that lead to the like lower end of the spectrum, I would have to say country music and rock. My high school career, I listened to a lot of rock music. Growing up in 2000s, there were a few country songs that became popular, but nothing outside of that. So I would say country and rock, but I still love all music. <laughs>